We got Paul of Freer, 31, E4, I like to play E5, and whether or not it's the Roy Lopez Italian, the whale variation. Okay, this is a super rare line, so I'm excited to, to explore this. We're going to try to target this, this outpost on D4. Notice the pawns can't actually attack on D4. So knight to C6 looks very nice to me. Um, right away, we're going to try to take advantage of this outpost. Both his pawns are overdeveloped. Um, there comes the queen. And hmm, how would I like to... So I, I guess we're going to go ahead and attack. We'll attack this e4 pawn and he'll defend it. That's fine. Um, there's no checks. There's only two dangerous. He does have a bit of an outpost himself. But but this, this knight is occupied at the moment. Let's sneak the bishop out to c5. And I think that should be okay. We we are looking at some sacking ideas here. Um, maybe right away I can try to sack my bishop if you guys want to play a fun fun variation. Um, play a fun variation. You think the bishop move is brilliant? I'll do a review at the very end. Um, okay, so there's the knight. He wants to go to g5. Um, h6. h6 would stop that. I could castle. I'm not necessarily too worried about him going to g5. He is defending the square. Another interesting idea would be to kind of force his hand. Um, we can go ahead and play d6. And now we're defending this pawn. But we've also released the bishop. So not only will we double up his pawns in the h file, which is a notoriously awful position to be in if you're white, but we'll castle. Um, as a caveat to that move, Rook g1 does put tremendous pressure on our position, and we haven't really traded down enough to um, to necessarily warrant that. And a move like bishop d7 is quite nice as well, because it does laser down the queen. I'm sure that's the more accurate move here. Um, but it's always tempting. It's always interesting to say, well, what if I just doubled up his, his pawns and, and, and won the development game? But I don't love that idea as much. His knight here, I actually like his knight a lot better on b5 than on its probably proper square, which was d5. Yes, he is threatening this forking position, but um, do I have a combo here now? Maybe I do take the knight now, and then after pawn takes, I win the center pawn. Or that would probably be the correct move order. Take, pawn takes, and then knight takes. Um... Or do I even play takes, pawn takes, bishop sack, king takes, and then knight takes? And then where's the compensation? Where do you go there? Um, I mean, that could be quite brutal of an attack. Um, if I play this and he goes here. Hmm. Okay. But you have to be careful. You do not want to move this knight because there is a discovered attack on the king. Castling is a, usually a solid idea here, but maybe I just maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe I'm overthinking a little bit. Let's go ahead and I notice, guys, because he played the whale variation, the c4 pawn is blocking the queen from defense. His knight had a distinct purpose, which was to defend that pawn, and because he moved it and to the wrong square at that, we immediately win a center pawn. So a big mistake you might find at the beginner level is just hanging pawns. Um, notice this position is not only us up a pawn, but it's us up tremendous tempo um, with, with a genuine attack. It's as if we played white in this situation, um, and the white pieces are on defense. So we've stolen the initiative instantly. Now, I was expecting d3. Um, I was I had to assume that he wouldn't play f3 because it opens up this diagonal and there are ideas there. This is a good move because it also develops the bishop. If I take here and pawn takes, yeah, maybe it is time to um maybe it is time to mess around a little bit and and take that knight. I know I said that I don't like the idea of the rook being on g7, and that's still true. I don't love it, but I have a feeling that he's he may decide to just take with the pawn. 
which is better for us if he does do that, but he does not. Um, check is interesting, but does it work? I could also maybe threaten queen h4, and this is mate almost. He moves over, but then... And then there's also just... Um, there's also just knight to to f2. Maybe this is the best combo. Knight to f2. Rook moves over. And then... And then... And then queen h4. But then... But then rook g4. But then knight takes. So now watch that rook just scoot over. And we have options here too. If the rook does scoot over to g1, we could simply just sack the knight, but then instantly win back the rook. Um, so I'm considering that as well. So two candidate moves here. It's always good to have multiple candidate moves. Candidate move number one, which is the most practical solution to get to an end game and win material, is knight takes on d3, right? And yes, the bishop takes back, but also discovery on the rook, we win that piece back, and now we're just winning. Um, I think a fancier move that is really, really interesting is, is queen h4. The rook can't actually jump in. But my only thought with that is it's not, a, it's not a very forcing line. I think you should always go for the forcing lines. And I think after maybe maybe king to e2 or even king to, to d2, I'm wondering what the next attack is. Well, king to d2, queen f4. But... And I guess you can't actually move... Well, yeah, but here, king to e2. Um, what's the continuation of the king to e2? Do I just play back queen to h5? And then if he goes... Uh, almost, the queen's here. Okay. So we'll sack the knight, but it's a temporary sack. It, it won't quite... Um... And shockingly, he doesn't take back with the bishop. Um, I could get greedy here. I could get greedy here and and take and take on b two, threatening the queen once again. Um, but just to keep it to keep this pretty civil, I'm gonna go ahead and win that rook, and now it makes me feel a lot more comfortable about castling, and also it allows me to activate my queen on g five, um, unless of course he takes this knight. Which I'm not entirely sure why he didn't take it to begin with. Um, I guess he wanted to take it with the king. Um, fine with me. Um, doesn't necessarily help or hurt my position. Um, I wonder if I sack a pawn here. Pawn, pawn e4. And then, and then if he gets on a dark square, I'm attacking him. If he goes here... We almost have a check, but you have to be so careful because of this discovery. Let's just castle. That That's the only thing he has going in this position is that if I accidentally move my knight somewhere stupid, he can discover, check, win the queen, win the rook, just something silly. Um, I want to mitigate my opponent's threats. And I think I've successfully done that up a full five points of material. Um, we used a bit of clock, but that's not a problem at all. This position is, is completely winning. And I actually like this e4 sack quite a lot more now. How are we doing, Michael M? Um, bro is doing a speed run at the moment. We're just, um, ooh, okay. So bishop e3, I just think I take back here. I mean, he's triple attacking a7, which I don't like at all. And like I said, guys, when you're up material, always good to just trade that, trade it down. Queen g5, we like to activate our pieces, especially when there's an advantage. Um, and we'll see what he plays here. If he moves over to d3 or f3, I like the idea of just moving the pawn forward and sacking. Um, just sacking the pawn. And this does a couple of things. It activates my rooks if he takes, but also gives my knight another option. Um, so I, I do have e5 now. So, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do I move the knight now and then check and then uh, what's the best move here? The, there is a hanging piece on the board. Maybe this does make sense, but 
at the end of the day, queen e3, just push the knight away, knight here, but then where does he go? I don't love the idea of giving up a free pawn, but but in, in the name of an, a, a, of a clean attack, um, in the name of a clean attack, I, I, I just... I can justify this to myself. I, I think that we can we can give up c7 and, and maybe even knight d4. Notice the knight is attacking c7, but it's also defending um, d4. So I'm completely fine with with losing that pawn, um, momentarily attacking my rook, but very momentarily. It's it's not going to be a, um, a constant threat that I'm going to have to worry about here. If he plays king d1 maybe i have queen f3 and then depending on where he goes maybe queen f2 um we'll see if he plays something well actually that should be his only move here now if here then maybe i actually push e3 if he stays in line Um, I also push e3. I think e3 is the winning move here. We're really getting aggressive with this this past e pawn, but I'm not worried about losing a rook um, at all. To be honest, it's um, it's it's not really a threat. And yeah, here we go. So he moves the king over, and there comes e3. And of course, the knight can take the rook, and all the power to him for the first time in this game, he will be up material, but at the cost of his king's life. Um, that's not going to do the trick either. This actually, this actually does say, hey, listen, do you want to trade off pieces? But the caveat here is the queen is blocking off the king's last escape square. And yes, queen f2 is in fact checkmate game over.